Catherine and I'm an Education Officer at the National Archives. Today we're going to be working together on one document from our collection, practising some key history skills and finding out how it can help us understand an important period of our history. Let's see which box we're looking in today. As you can see, every box has a unique code. We have over 11 million of these boxes. The code tells us which government department it comes from. This can often reveal clues about what's inside. For example, HO stands for Home Office and MEPO stands for Metropolitan Police. Ours has the code P-R-E-M, PREM. What do you think that stands for? Before we open the box and find out what document's inside, I want you to think about what questions you should ask about a historical document that you've never seen before. For example, what type of document is it? Is it a newspaper or a photograph? Sometimes this is obvious, other times it's not so clear. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to come up with a few more questions we could ask. Start thinking in three, two, one, off you go. Well done, let's see if we came up with similar questions. We could ask, what is it about? Or what is the content of the document? When was it made? Is there a date? Or do we have to work it out from other clues? Who made it? Or what is its origin? Who's it for? Perhaps we can answer these questions easily, or we might need to try and work them out. Why was it made? And what's its purpose? And the last one, why do we have it at the National Archives? In the next 10 minutes, we're going to work together to find the answers to these questions. Now we're gonna find out what's inside the box and take a look at the document we are working on today. At first, I'm only going to give you five seconds to see what you can spot straight away. Get ready, go. Time's up. That wasn't long, but I'm sure you have some suggestions already. Let's point out some basic features of the document first. Did you notice that the page is a little crumpled and ragged at the edges? The text has been produced using a typewriter too. That could give us some ideas about the date. Also, it's been hole punched in the corner and just above that, it says copy. I wonder if that means that this is not the original. There's a number handwritten in the other corner, number 46. Is that a page number or a date, do you think? It's also quite short. It doesn't take up the whole page. Does this mean that this is a complete document or is it part of something larger? Let's take a closer look and see what more we can find out. I'll put up a timer for 60 seconds this time. As the document is quite short, we can read the whole thing. Can you find a date? What names can you see? And what are some of the key words and phrases? Off you go.
Right, let's see what we've discovered. If we start at the end of the document, we have some very useful information, a date and some interesting names. The date reads September the 30th, 1938, which is almost exactly one year before the outbreak of the Second World War. So we have a clear date for when this document was produced. The two names are A. Hitler and Neville Chamberlain. It says signed in brackets by their names, although there aren't any signatures on this document. I'm sure you know that A. Hitler stands for Adolf Hitler, who was the Führer or leader of Germany at this time. Neville Chamberlain was the British Prime Minister. So we have two important people connected to this document. What phrases stood out to you? They give us some insight into the content of this document and also its purpose. In the first paragraph, it talks about Anglo-German relations, which is the relationship between Britain and Germany. In the second, it says never to go to war with one another again. And in the third, there is the word peace. So we can be confident that this document is about the desire to prevent war from happening between these two countries. But how? If we look again, we can find out. If we go back to the first paragraph, it tells us that the German Führer and the British Prime Minister have had a further meeting today. This tells us that the two leaders have met in person to discuss this issue. But it also tells us that they are in agreement about the importance of having a good relationship, not only for their countries, but for the rest of Europe. Paragraph two tells us that the leaders signed an agreement last night and also mentions a naval agreement, which means they've met on at least two occasions and the meetings have produced these agreements. The third paragraph talks about removing possible sources of difference. The language used is also interesting. In the second paragraph, describing the agreements as being symbolic of the desire of our two peoples. This means these agreements represent the will of the people in their respective countries, not just the leaders themselves. In the last paragraph, strong phrases such as we are resolved and we are determined suggest that these meetings and the agreements that came out of them are important and the leaders strongly support them. There is a clear sense that through the method of consultation, in other words, open and regular discussions, peace in Europe will be assured. Before we think about the context of this document, let's return to the document code for a moment to see what else this tells us. Our document comes from a box with a rather long code. It starts with PREM. Do you remember at the start of the session, I told you that the codes tell us which government department the documents come from? For example, HO stands for Home Office and FO stands for Foreign Office. What do you think PREM stands for? It's a bit of a tricky one. It actually stands for the Prime Minister's Office. PREM 1 covers a relatively long time period from 1916 to 1940 and includes official correspondence of a successive Prime Ministers, Second World War policy and operational papers, as well as other things. So we know from the date of the document and the names on the document that it comes from 1938 when Neville Chamberlain was the British Prime Minister. The fact that it is included in the PREM 1 document series hints at its importance. So time to reveal a little more about the context of this document. Do you remember the word copy is at the top of this document? It is in fact a copy of the Anglo-German Agreement of Cooperation. The original has signatures of both Hitler and Chamberlain on it. This agreement was made in Munich, Germany, between the two leaders and came at a time when tensions in Europe were very high. The day before, Chamberlain had met with Hitler and the Italian and French Prime Ministers Benito Mussolini and Eduardo Daladier to discuss Hitler's demands on Czechoslovakia. The Munich Agreement came out of this meeting on the 29th of September. A copy of this agreement, signed by the four leaders, is also held at the National Archives. 
The British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain sought to avoid war with Germany through a policy of appeasement. This was a diplomatic tactic which meant offering concessions to an aggressor nation in an attempt to avoid war or at least delay war. Chamberlain returned immediately to London, apparently convinced that he'd achieved peace for our time. However, this prediction of a lasting peace could not have been more wrong. The Munich Agreement has been interpreted as a major failure of the policy of appeasement, which encouraged further aggressive actions by Hitler. It's also been argued that the postponement of war with Germany gave the British government another year to build up its armed forces. What do you think? You're now really well prepared to go on to the rest of the lesson, which looks at the lead up to these agreements. I'm sure you'll have lots to say about what Chamberlain was trying to achieve. And like real historians, you'll be able to use archival evidence to support and inform your views. Well done for all your hard work today. Enjoy the rest of the lesson. See you next time.